Welcome back to the Last Lap Podcast. No race the weekend just gone, but we all know what's coming up this weekend. Don't we, Niran? It's nice the of- Vegas, baby. Nice of you Vegas. to come back, mate. It's been yeah, a couple of weeks off. That. I know, yeah. Sorry <laughs> about that, everyone. For the neck. How you been, man? Been on holiday. Yeah, no. Good, good, good. What have you been up to? What have you been cooking? Refreshified. Yeah, yeah. Ready. Yeah. To go. Um, yeah, no, I've I've been off and about. A couple quadrant shoots here and there. Nice. Riding a tricycle down a mountain in Wales, pretty much in the rain. As you do. Pissing it down. I don't know why we thought going to Wales in November was a good idea, but... That's like are. where they train the army, isn't it? Like they've got yeah. loads of army training in Wales because of how bad the conditions yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of how, and you like, were like, yeah, you know what? That's a great place to make a video. Yeah, exactly. Nice and relaxing. <laughs> yeah, so, well, you needed the R and R, I'm sure, before this weekend's Vegas Grand Prix. Indeed. Yeah, man. Honestly, how are you feeling about it, mate? First and foremost, I'm excited. You know, and I know, I know the the sort of the purists of Formula One kind of like seeing what's what's happening in terms of the entertainment value you see mm-hmm. what the product is going to be here at vegas and they're going oh well you know back in my day it was just bloody <laughs> racing <laughs> but i like that element. i like i like because th- there's so much hype around it i know it's probably because it's the first grand prix the first time i'm going there it was like mm. miami last year but i'm seeing people over there i'm genuinely like man i wish i was there mostly just to 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 be in vegas remember when the fun stops stop but it's it's that level of hype that I've not seen at a new track of probably ever. I think, and that's why it's exciting, man. There's so there's so many there's so many different things you're gonna experience this weekend just because it's yeah. Vegas. I, th- I think the hype around Miami was not as much, but but similar. It was it, yeah. probably like fifty percent the hype of this. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of it, like obviously Miami didn't end up being hasn't ended up being a great race. Mm. Um, I think the restriction it. You know, if we're talking about the actual motor race itself, which is why we're all here, um, it's been a bit disappointing. And I think that's maybe fed into the cynicism a bit. I think if Miami had been really good mm. and been a pleasant surprise to a lot, because a lot of the noise around it was exactly the same noise in terms of the cynical perspective. Is like, oh, we're just here for, for money, which of, of course that is why we're that in Miami. Like, <laughs> <obviously, laughs> there's not, there's not trying to beat around the bush. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think if that had done better, I think there would be less cynicism around it. Um, but at the same time, you know, you say back in, back in my day, well, back in my day when we raced in Vegas, we raced around the little, little car park, didn't exactly. we? Exactly. Yeah. That you wasn't, know? you know, that, that seems crazy. <laughs> man. You've got such a glamorous place or such an eccentric place yeah. like Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That really sums up like olden day Formula One, I think, mm. where they were just like, you know what? We've got a location here. We've got fucking Las Vegas. Where should we do the track? Car park, mate. Yeah, fuck it. You can put a car up anywhere in the world. There's nothing redeeming about a car park. Yeah, it no, could be no, it no. could be the Sainsbury's in Kidderminster. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. No, or it could be in Dubai. It's still <laughs> a car park. Just the cars change. You know. Yeah, I th- I, you know what? I, I think the way they are doing it to actually mm. utilize the strip. If you're going to have a Vegas Grand Prix, yeah, this is how you do it. You have to do that. You, you have know. to do it. You have to play off that. You know, have you seen the curbs and they've got like the... the I like them. I like that. Nice little yeah, touch. They've got the spades, the clubs, the yeah, yeah, yeah. arts on them, which I like is them. sick. I like that. I like when tracks do I'm that. Aware. Austria does that with uh, runoff areas mm. in red and white. Yeah, Brazil yeah. does that with uh, yellow <laughs> and... I think it's yellow. Or is it green and... I think it's green and yellow. yellow isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, nice little touches. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I think... <sighs> look, Vegas, I want it to be good. Of course, I want it to be good. F1 are running this event themselves. Yeah. So again, most typically most events, um, F1 is essentially the one getting paid almost. You've got the, the promoter. So say for well, it, pretty much every single race, you've got a promoter, say Silverstone, for example, who they are stumping up the money and then hoping to make that money back in terms of yeah, ticket sales and, and stuff sold, whatever. F1 have put, we know it's over 500 million. It's mm-hmm. probably more, well, a lot more than that. It's only going out. F1 are putting their own money into this. Yeah. Run, there's no promoter. There's no Vegas promoter. They're putting their own, they're putting a lot on the line, which I think does explain to an extent. Gamble, you could argue. Yeah. This, is, this guy's good. Sorry about that. This guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It is a gamble. And um, I think that explains why, you know, we've seen, Look, I don't, I, let's not. We can't expect to go onto the uh, official social media accounts and of the teams and, and F1 and all that, and then to be really cynical about the race. Of yeah. course, they're going to hype it up, <clears throat> but yeah. they're even more incentivized to hype it up, right? Because they're, they're signed up for this for ten years. So if this race doesn't work, mm. like there's a problem. Ten but, years of pain. What, what defines to you a successful Vegas Grand Prix? Honestly, 
just a race that I can look back on. Because over the hype is there, the, the extravagance is there, mm-hmm. all of that sort of jazz. That's going to be sick. Mm-hmm. You have the sphere, which we'll talk about, and you know, and mm. whatever you've got. Um, the fact that it's on basically, a, in essence, a Saturday night, all that jazz. It, it's going to look and feel exciting, mm. just from the out, the outside stuff, right? So then, all that really needs to happen, they're going to put on a good show, but then I need to see a race that I look back on and go, that was at least like a seven out of 10. Mm. Or or see some potential. I remember when we first went to Baku and it was a shocker. True. The first race we ever went to Baku was was appalling, but I think the, the what's it called, the support races went there as well mm-hmm. and just fucked up the base. <laughs> there, it was just crashes all over the gaff. Didn't know what it was like. Whatever. It's often that, the case. And that has been the case ever since yeah. in F2. I just need to see some potential. Mm. And I think there should be because, you know, you look at the, you look at the track, it's straight, massive straight line. Mm-hmm corners massive straight line there should be overtaking opportunities providing drs isn't too overpowered Mm -hmm. um there should be an opportunity to keep the pack quite close together and see some level of good racing Mm. um i don't see why not but that that's what i think will define a success because again you know that even this year you look at the hype about miami in comparison to last year to me it was just another grand prix Mm. already and that was just off the back of one bad race. Same. Vegas, slightly different. I think people would give it a little bit more time because, again, it's even more of an experience, mm. even more entertainment off the track. And it's even more unique than Miami, which is just, in essence, a kind of a, a track that's kind of just been built in Miami. Vegas has... Kind of in a car park. Or like, yeah, like well, yeah. In, around the yeah, stadium. In essence, yeah, yeah, it's around the stadium. Whereas Vegas is the strip. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, which has even more, like, value. It would be like having the race in Miami Beach. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like yeah, yeah, I would probably give it a bit more time if it was... But mm. again, Miami just sort of all, already kind of faded into that just... Yeah, yeah. ...the track now. That's a good point about Miami, actually, because I feel like... You know, I say I, I went last year and obviously going there and seeing it yourself and, it, you know, you got that experience that very few people are going to get. Mm-hmm. The vast majority of people watching it TV. Like, and then so when we had the most recent Miami Grand Prix and I'm watching it on telly, it, I'm not getting any of that magic of, of Miami. And I do wonder how much of the Vegas magic they will be able to kind of show yeah. on the TV. Yeah. You know what I mean? To make it really stand out relative to one of the more... I don't know, like a, a, a Monza. I think Monza does a good job. They do a good job of really capturing like the Tafosi like hype. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think he does a really good job of that. So that's what I'm, <clears throat> that's why I'm, I'm interested. It will be definitely a challenge for the broadcaster Ooh. to like make this show look as good as it, it should look. Because a, a race in Vegas, like on paper, it, in terms of a street circuit, mm. anywhere in the world, you've got to say that that ticks like, the most boxes, yeah, surely, yeah, yeah, sure. It's like the most artificial place in the world. Yeah, <laughs> they have crafted the, the entire place and the trackers. I mean, even the track, you kind of look at it and go, yeah, they've they've made it like this just to make sure that there's a lot of overtakes. Surely, yeah. Well, and again, it's it's. it's are boring. we just going to get DRS overtakes? That's that's my worry, okay. right? Because like no one's tested there. This is the first time at the track. There's a lot of concerns around. Like they've just re- have had to retarmac it all. Um, temperatures as well it's going to be like five degrees celsius maybe wavy it's gonna it's gonna snow the first ever snowy grand prix <laughs> in formula one history snow in the, las vegas snow in the desert yeah bring the snow the, you know what? i wouldn't put it past vegas yeah honestly you know when bernie eccleston used to say about sprinklers that's the kind of shit that like vegas promoters would pull just to drop it on but i, I don't know i i think that that there's rightfully concerns around like the tires and the temperature, especially that. Do you see that quote from Ross Braun? Braun? No, what did he say? I'm paraphrasing, but basically didn't, didn't even consider that it would be cold. Oh yeah, no, I did see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's absolutely wild. Surely right. one thing, surely like there's, there's probably about three things that you check when you book a date in the calendar of like, right, there's going to be a Formula One race there. One of them has to be the weather. Surely you've got to look at the weather forecast or like the last couple of years and go, right, is it going to be like warm? Is it going to be cold? Is like it going to be pissing like- it down? Like you wouldn't go Malaysia in like, because <laughs> it will just flood every year. You know, like wiki how, right? And you go like facts about the desert. I didn't know. The first one's always going to be, it's actually really cold at night, yeah. by the way. Like that's just normal in the desert. In every desert ever. It, you could like- have asked anyone who lives there, just one person. What's it like at midnight in uh, November? Yeah, yeah, oh, it's yeah. bloody Baltic, mate. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. thank you. I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't say it quite like that. Bloody Baltic. <laughs> <The> ve- in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking freezing. Or, 
Fucking hell. <laughs> the great exodus <laughs> of uh, Brits over to Vegas. Yeah, no, yeah. I think that, um, yeah, I, there's rightfully concerns around that. I think part of it for me is, is it comes back to the whole tyre blanket argument. You know, mm. like teams and drivers don't like the idea of taking the tyre blanket, blankets away because the tyres would be too cold. And it's, it's, you know, it's the driver's job to get temperature in the tyres and drive within the limitations. We talked about this after Australia. Do you remember when everyone was shunting all over the place? Yeah. And drivers were like, oh, we shouldn't have done a standing reset. I was like, you're responsible your, for the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just like, because just, things happen doesn't mean it's like, oh, well, I've, that's why we all binned it, mate. No, it's your job not to bin it. Exactly. Saying, exactly. Like, you know the limitation. You know you've got low tyre temp. So I'm not so... I'm not so concerned about that. I'm a yeah. I, I don't think it can be bad make, as 2005 uh, Indianapolis. Yeah, facts. It's gonna make for some unique things that are happening in the race, like undercuts and stuff. You know, when you get out of pit stop, mm. or whatever, it's gonna be yeah, yeah, unique in comparison. To it's the a softest, race. softest range compound mm. tires wise, okay. but um, but you know, obviously, there's a lot of there's been a lot of focus on stuff outside of the actual racing, and mm. I just wanted to. This is crazy, right? Talking about the price. And we've actually seen a lot of tickets being now sold for big discounts. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. is a bit concerning. Yeah. I'd be pissed, man, if I bought a ticket at full price like six months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and now I'm like seeing 80% it. 80% off. <laughs> like that, guys. Look yeah. at my money. But you know what I mean? Like, you see something go on sale just after you buy it. Yeah. And then you yeah. return it and buy it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't well, think that's you can a, do that's that. That's a shout, actually. Yeah, it's a good shout. Yeah, if, you, if you're going to do, if, if you've bought a Thrifty ticket, Tomo, yeah. mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a thrifty boy, all right. Selling your ticket for Vegas on D Bop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm definitely not um exorbitant enough to spend five million dollars on the Emperor package. Right. Right. So what this includes, right? This is the Emperor package for the Ve uh, Vegas Grand Prix. Five nights at the Nobu Hotel Sky Villa at Caesars Palace with ten thousand three hundred square foot, three bedroom space. Ten thousand three hundred square foot, and he's only got three bedrooms. That's a bit mad. Which contains a terrace overlooking the strip for seventy-five guests. What's the maths? Seventy-five divided by five. Five million divided by seventy-five. You can do the maths. This yeah, I ain't so. doing it. I'll tell you that for free. <laughs> and then you get um, Chef Nobu, Nobu himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, host a private dinner for 12. What about yeah, the other 63? Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, well, what the rest of them, man? They <laughs> just stay on the balcony. How do you work out who gets them? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Yo. You just do rock, paper, scissors. 63 people are just going Mac. <laughs> That's <laughs> outrageous. I mean, the Mackies will be a bigger portion. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. Around the clock butler service. Maybe the other 63 get the butler service. Yeah, maybe. Um, personal driver with Rolls Royce for the stay. 12 tickets to the paddock club to take it. Well, again, why only 12? What yeah. about the other 63, man? Yeah, that's, that's, that's well arsh. Uh, you know what, though? To be fair, if someone else was paying for it, I doubt they'd be splitting it 75 ways. So I wouldn't mind just sitting up and getting, yeah, just... getting the view from the balcony, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just chill out. You guys go do the paddock. <laughs> yeah, you go do the You go to Mr. Nobu. I'm just going <laughs> to order in. I'm getting delivery. And you also get two tickets so again the other 73 are like what's yeah, going on yeah. to watch the weekends um, with Adele she's doing a little she still does a little what do they call it when some musician stays at Vegas and does like a it's like a residency that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah Cher did one for like well she's probably done one for like 20 years ago. Cher do you believe in life <sighs> what a what a woman, what um, a woman. That, that, yeah that's I mean fight wait sorry hang on a second just circling back there. Go on. Is that it? Is that the end of that's, the... That's that, the end that of... It? Is that... That's all, that's, that's all you get for million, five million, bro. No, that is crazy, to be fair. That's fine. insane. That is crazy. Five millions, like... Six, like, imagine you've got Silverstone tickets, yeah? You're looking, I don't know, for, is it 500 these days for a Silverstone ticket? Or is it 500 it? million, yeah. It's about. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. 500 million. <laughs> but, like, if we're scaling up, like, a normal Formula One event... Yeah. To fight, even just the, the the base level Vegas tickets mm. were being quoted like ten grand for like certain things, five mil, and I get to see Adele. I might get food from Mister Nobu. <laughs> Depends if I get chosen. <laughs> might not. Might get the paddock. Might not. Might just be chilling <laughs> on the balcony. The numbers are, you've got about a one in five chance. <laughs> you've got a one in five chance of it and <laughs> still that? not even being <laughs> worth it. It's like one in six. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, realistically, I'm not seeing Adele because it's two out of 75. <laughs> so it's the guy that booked it and then maybe his wife or something. <laughs> so I'm not going. I'm watching it on TV in the hotel room. Yeah, it's, it doesn't seem like, I wonder how they price that. Like, hmm, what should we charge for this? Hmm, two million, mm, four, 
Five. Five, yeah. Yeah, let's do five. five. Round it up. Five. Well, no, this no, is just... That, that's just like, it's targeted though at super rich people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just With people who... Shit about money, like... Five million is like 50 quid. Yeah. Um, like, uh, imagine, Jesus Christ. Imagine that life, man. Honestly. Um, look, the life. Yeah. it will be interesting. I hope anyone who's going this weekend... Um, because oh, I know I've, I've seen a bunch of yes obviously there's a lot of celebrities and high profile people but I know a lot of people did also get tickets yes yeah. so I hope the event delivers I um, hope it's good everything don't you want don't spend five million pounds on it please but if you do <laughs> enjoy Adele if you get chosen out of the 75 people and if you do and want to um, sponsor the last lap YouTube channel yes with maybe yeah. just set aside you know maybe a tenth of that you know, half yeah. a mil. We could do a bit with that. Yeah, yeah. We? Facts, facts. Yeah. If anyone wants to put, yeah, half <laughs> we'll a mil put your table. face down here. Yeah, yeah. Prime spot. Any billionaires out there? We will just literally slap your face <laughs> on the set for half a mil. There you go. I don't know if we'd want to put any billionaire's face on there. <laughs> to be honest, mate. But um, anyway, probably not. Still. <laughs> what would be your um? What would be your like dream venue? Because we know, remember that there's that classic interview of uh, Lewis saying Miami was his dream and yeah. Ricardo saying Vegas, which I'm, I'm glad that Daniel's actually going to get to do this because obviously yeah. at the start of the year, it was like, oh man, he's going to get Vegas, but yeah. he's not in a car. Yeah, I was going to say it's his dream and he's just, yeah. He's Where would you, wh wh how would you answer that question? Where would be your dream? Dream location. F1 location. Yeah. And I, I want a full like picture of how that race would like where how where it would be in that location oh, that's no. actually a difficult one you know nottingham yeah round the victoria center mate that's it round the back yeah okay up, up, the, up the street there's like a marks and spencers you got like a nice little elevation change okay yeah, yeah that's important got in tram F1. tracks there as well so that adds a little bit more spice uh in terms of like you get very time. slippery in the wet as Can well get very slippery in the wet yeah. so might cause severe levels of degradation you know, mm -hmm. driving over tram tracks the entire time um unprofessional should have <laughs> um <laughs> what else have we got would yeah. you call it the not an mgp yeah I, th I think you'd yeah you'd, you'd have to mm. call it the i think you'd have to name it after one of the nightclubs there okay yeah, yeah nice all robin hood the robin hood true grand prix. the robin hood the grand, robin prix. Hood grand prix Still from, from the rich <laughs> <laughs> by charging exorbitant uh, ticket yeah, prices yeah, exactly. yeah, and yeah. then redistributing the wealth amongst so, the local uh, community. Yeah, exactly. Across Nottingham. There you go. Boom. I love that. My actual answer. Um, <laughs> however. <laughs> really? That wasn't your actual answer? No, that was, that was a good answer. We actually developed <laughs> okay. that quite well. You know, okay. like point evidence explain in school. We really, we developed that for 10 marks. That was good. <laughs> um, I want to... Obviously, I, I'm I'm all for the inclusivity of the sport. I want to see us go to even more like locations or different continents. Mm -hmm. We're have an African Grand Prix. Um, realistically, the only option there is probably South Africa and, and Kailami because mm -hmm. it's just not the the infrastructure at the moment for other tracks across the across the continent. I think my dream would be something like I, I honestly I'd love to see another Pacific sort of Grand Prix like Fiji or some shit like that. Fiji would be mad. But like more, but like picturesque and just fucking wavy. And it's like an actual experience if you're going there on like holiday. The Mauritius that, Grand Prix. Oh, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, like the African <laughs> islands as well, like Maldives or some shit. Yeah. Oh man. Even the Caribbean. Just like a holiday destination that's got like blue seas and be that would be such a unique yeah. experience for a Formula One race. Barbados Grand Prix, yeah, home of uh, Zay Maloney. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Make it happen. Yeah, that would be that would be wavy. Barbados Grand Prix, that would be crazy. That would that is so unbelievably far. I feel from like happening or like being on the <laughs> radar of happening. <laughs> But that makes it even better. I w I would absolutely love that. I remember rumors about a Pacific Grand Prix in like Colombia. Um, oh yeah, technically, because there's technically a part of Colombia that's the Caribbean, yeah, like, I don't yeah, know how that works, but. yeah. I don't know. I think they're quite loose with the naming sometimes. I, I don't know. I, I think that I'm not sure what the infrastructure is like. I, no, I think absolute dream. Oh, it'd be a really interesting part of the world. I mean, you know what? I, I do think. In, in in terms of a country, mm. I think having an Indian Grand Prix, Indian, yeah, like yeah. having that back would be. I think there's a m much bigger appetite for it now. Yeah, I think it was the wrong time, wasn't it, to go there? Sp that that track specifically, or yeah, uh, Bud was all right. I, I, maybe, maybe there's other options. I don't yeah. know. Um, Speak in terms of the tracks as well that we we miss from that. I, I miss Korea, man. Korea was a was a fun <sighs> Korea was like a cool place to have it but again I, I feel like I'd want to see it 
if I want to see a gr- Korean Grand Prix, I'd want to see it in like downtown Seoul. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that would be like, because it was kind of, it was out in the docks, yeah, the Korean Grand Prix. Nowhere, wasn't it? And it didn't, it, you know what? Like, I really like when Grand Prix really um, kind of reflects the the feel of their nation. Yeah. Like, really, I, I, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 I know. That's like, what you mean. I don't know, when Silverstone's the, a bit rainy and drizzly in the yeah, middle of like... Well, it's Britain. Britain. I'm saying, well, it's just July in, in you know, in, in the UK. I get what you mean, yeah, because obviously otherwise you, you just kind of end up with stale yeah. tracks or tracks that don't feel like they have a personality. Mm. It doesn't have to be like stereotypical, like everything is, mm. you know, is what you expect from that country, but just a little bit of a vibe, yeah. Icelandic Grand Prix. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now, those are cold tire temps. They are. In the bin. They are. Ice. You're going to have to get the chains on the tires. Yeah. Snow chains. That would, uh, that would be wavy though. If we, no. if we just fully dedicate it to like, fuck it, like, so we're going to have one snow Grand Prix a year. <laughs> we're just going like, look, we've got 24 way. races next year. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah, that would actually be wavy. I don't want all the races to, I want every race to feel unique There should different. be, there should, oh, we, oh, this, this is a rabbit this, hole, though. You know, this weekend's going to be a good test, right? Because mm. if these cars can actually work in these really like, much colder temperatures, then maybe there's a conversation to be had by, you know, the Finnish Grand Prix. Mm. You know, old Kimi and Valtteri's yeah, neck exactly, of the woods. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot Mick of drivers. and finally finishes sabbatical. Keke Rosberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fin- Finland's F1 driver to population ratio is by far and away the greatest. Yeah, it's time. absolutely mental. Yeah, and in terms of titles as well. Yeah, man, it's unnecessary. Clean it up, <laughs> really. They do it in rally as well. I don't. I just Finnish people are just sick of driving cars. Hoverlinen, yeah, as well. yeah, man, he was out here. Think all these other, it's crazy. Oh, I can't think of any others now. I'm not gonna lie to you. Bottas, Kovalainen, and Raikkonen, and Hakkinen. There was ah, oh, there was someone else. Um, Mika Salo. Mika Sa- was he finished? I think he was. Oh, go on. I then. think he was. Sa- I think. I think Salo. Fuck was. it. We'll say he is. If he's um, not, sorry. All right. I'm looking in Icelandic Grand Prix. Let's can I just it. say that opens up a whole new can of worms for like Joker Grand Prix? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where like once or twice a year we just do something absolutely fucking mental, like just <laughs> just like a, like a snow, like full on December time. We're just rags in it round snow banks in Sweden mm. or in Norway or something. Then fucking we're off in the middle of the Caribbean and we've got like fucking little water splashes here and there. Yeah. That we've got to drive through because beaches and that get me. We could do all sorts of stuff. <laughs> we could really like make this wacky races. Just for two Grand Prix a year. I'm not saying take away the integrity for the whole season. Yeah. But just for two Grand Prix, we're doing something like stupid. Stefano, I know you watch him. Yeah, exactly. Come Make on. it happen. Give the man his you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Got to indulge. What other stupid shit could we do? Um, Driving okay. around like live volcanoes and stuff. Okay. I think, um, I think, I think, I think Le Mans start. Le Mans starts an interesting yeah, idea. Fuck it. That yeah. I'd like to Start see. 24 hour race as Little well. Sprint. But not at Le Mans. It's like a triathlon. Sick. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. Right. Do the Le Mans start race somewhere. We'll do the triathlon race somewhere else. So they've got a run. They've got a run five laps. They got a swim Cook. somewhere. Probably not on the track, realistically. Yeah. And then they've got to get back in the car and do a sprint race. But then you have to wear a weighted vest in reverse championship order, right? So Max Verstappen's carrying this massive load and Sergeant's got, sprinting. Yeah, yeah. So he gets a big head start yeah, and then Max, Max will catch like him up. Yeah, Max a bag on his back. Bro, we fixed it. I'm sorry. People you keep know. saying F1's broken. It wouldn't be if you put us in charge, yeah, would it? mate, honestly, we've been sat here brainstorming for three minutes. And we've is, with the we, haven't, we, we didn't even plan this. This is yeah. good. This is yeah, nothing, not none, of the, none of this is on the notes for this yeah. episode. And we're just... Don't. Listen, that's just absolute talent. Well, look, back to the notes. Um, we, we do have to put some early predictions in because mm. we won't be podcast until after the race, mm, yeah. um, which will come out next Tuesday, about 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. This podcast come out this Tuesday, 6 p.m. Um, what we thinking? What what teams, drivers, who you feeling, who you're not feeling? One this prediction weekend? I have is that Will I Am is going to end up being shown on the sphere. That's That's what I'm saying. How is he not sponsoring Williams? Like, yeah, that, yeah, that's actually crazy. Yeah, someone at his PR team has got to fucking fix up because that's crazy. You've got Alpine, Will Palace. I Am's. You've got all these mad collaborations going yeah. on at the minute. Why? 
Yeah. He loves it. Yeah, clearly he's just not, just doesn't know about the formula. That you know, <laughs> Maybe they don't have the formula. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> this is not the formula. It's just not the formula, pal. Incorrect pH. I think, um, <laughs> so, so what, <laughs> what, in terms of on track? Right, on who, track. Who, yeah. who, who's going quick? Who's going right, slow? I'm getting distracted here. Who's going, who's going into the... I think I think it's honestly going to be another one of those kind of uh, pretty unique Grand Prix in terms of like it changes up because of the temp, like the temps and because of the conditions a little bit. It's also quite a different track. I mean, it, surely Williams are going to go well here. Straight lines for days. That's the anticipation. <coughs> the, the thing is, it's, it's a while since we've had a, the Williams really like excel, um, like be at a track where it's really excelled in a straight line. Mm. Um, because the thing is. It's almost, I feel like the Williams is really good in a straight line around tracks that everyone is running either high or medium wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it's like, when everyone's taking their wings off. Yeah. They're not kind of exponent, they're not that much quicker than everyone else. It's just yeah. that they can, they can still get a lot of straight line out of their car when you chuck more wing on. So yes, I think Williams should run well, but I'm not doing crazy. I, th I think it's, for me, it's more about who, who lights up their tyres quickly. McLaren yeah. do a good job. Red Bull struggle with that, typically. Yeah. That's yeah. why qualifying, they're not so dominant. Yeah. So I think McLaren will be in a good place. And I think maybe, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I mean, Haas just, Haas will be rapid for the first five laps because they just burn their tyres immediately and yeah. then they'll fall off. Oh yeah, true, yeah. Haas, will, Haas could be leading. Hulkenberg's going like back that. to the old spec car. Really? Yeah. yeah. They said they've just, yeah, they've just... I've got all gassed about their Austin upgrade and yeah, classic Haas. I will say nothing. I think I think your boys. I, they, oh, they they yeah they liked your tweet as well about me being blocked. Oh like, sh yeah, we have got to talk about that. Yeah. So obviously, long term viewers, listeners know that Niran is blocked by Haas. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the hashtag free Niran campaign. A hashtag. That yeah, the hat the ha nice like that. It, it didn't it didn't unfortunately work. Um, but they we know they know now because they tweeted something. Funny, I can't remember. Yeah, it was it was to do with Lando and Nico coming together oh, yeah, in Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was funny, I retweeted it and added you being like, Niran can't see no, this. I can't see this, yeah, yeah. And they liked see the content. It. They and they liked it. it. So they've acknowledged. <clears throat> and they're, they're still blocked. I'm still blocked. Yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap, guys. But if, if we bring back the movement, then you never know. Maybe they could have a change of heart, you know. <clears throat> Christmas time coming up. Season yeah. of giving. Maybe they're feeling generous. You know, maybe admin, maybe there'll be a, you know, change in the admin, social media admin department. For yeah, exactly. House. Maybe, maybe they'll have a silly part. season for F1 team admins. For, for, for team admins, could you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Agreement reached. Oh, God. Well, the no. Tories are pulling yeah. that, aren't they? So, no. God. Um, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think, I think McLaren will be in, I think Lando will be in a good place this weekend. Lando first Grand Prix win in Vegas out just after his birthday. Who am I to say no? Who are you Get to me? say no? Who am I to say no? Absolutely. Um, I'm here for it. I'm here for McLaren domination all day, every day. Haven't had that. Have I actually ever had that since I was born? No. There's never, there's never been McLaren domination since. Oh, I thought you meant Lando domination since you were born. I'm like, you're older than him. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That is... Oh man, that's he depressing. dominated fresh out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was out there in the car in days. Never has anyone been born so quickly. Yeah, yeah. Lando Norris. Yeah, yeah. Is he he's just, oh, it's out <laughs> <laughs> Extra point for fastest lap. Jesus Christ, this baby was born fast. Fuck you know. <laughs> Straight out of there. Midwife. Well, that's that's a... That's a th there's a good sketch there. Midwife motorsport. I, I could see like a David Mitchell sketch around that, yeah, like a peep show, like Mitchell. classic styles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Web classic. For God's sake. Sorry, I, 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 I enjoyed that one a lot. But what I didn't enjoy last week was Mercedes' performances. Yeah, man, they stink. I'm not going to lie. Jesus um, Christ. The, Toto Wolf's comments were hilarious, by the way. He was just he, like, this car does not deserve a win. I can't wait for these lot to not have to drive this shit box any longer. Everyone at the factory is working through Christmas and New Year's and Hanukkah and every <laughs> holiday, Diwali, they're working through everything. <laughs> Every single thing they're working through. For that W, what is it, 14? Is, 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 It'll be the, it's 14 this it's year. The, yeah, yeah, W15, sorry. W15 is going to be elite. I, I, saw, I saw a few people mention this and it's kind of a good point. 
I feel because they're so used to being successful. It's like they don't know how to like. Like imagine if Gunter Steiner was like that every race. <laughs> that has stunk. Yeah. This like, has doesn't deserve points. Like, <laughs> we burn no our shit. tires. Yeah, fucking you made an ass car. Get on with it. It's what it is. But like, it's like just go again next year. So uh, uh, there's a few times this year where he's like, you could tell like he's just he's just lost his head yeah. and he's just like he's just in absolute tatters. And it's like yeah, you're, you're still it. second in the constructors, you're still almost second in the drivers yeah, with yeah. I don't know. Look, I, I think that I think well, so apparently they've said that they now understand why they were poor in Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, it was, at the time, they didn't, hence why they didn't just, you know, start both cars from the pit lane and just change it up because mm. they were dropping like stones. Mm. Um, I think they ran their car a bit too high because they were a bit scared of the the, uh, the skiddy, yeah. getting skiddies. It's getting skidda. Yeah, which is uh, not good in any sense. And they got disqualified, obviously, in Austin for that. Yeah, exactly. Did Lewis. Yeah. So I think that was part of the issue. But, I mean, he described it as the worst weekend in his 13 years in Formula One. This guy used to work at Williams. Yeah. I mean, they weren't, they were actually all right when he was there, to be fair. Oh, but. yeah, true. Yeah, they were actually, that was like Massa Bottas days, wasn't it? Or was it? No, 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 no I'm waffling. It was before that. Yeah, no, it was. When was he, wait, when was he at Williams? Yeah, he was part of Williams before he went to Mercedes and he went, he joined Mercedes the same time Lewis joined. Oh. They joined so at the same time. Like, so it'd been like 20, what, well, Lewis's last season at Ms. McLaren was 20, 2012. 12, yeah. And then he joined in 2013. <coughs> and had that one, yeah, season before then, the regs changed. So Soto Wolf was working with Pastor Maldonado. Yeah. Man. He was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was his worst weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were really bad then. I think that might be a bit of recency bias. Now, nah, all the Rosberg Hamilton days, no way. There's no way that was a worse day than Spain 20, whatever, when they crashed into each other. It was 2016. Uh, that was, f that was, yeah, when Verstappen won the race, didn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah there's no way. Yeah, bro, of course. Come, come on, man. That, nah, come on. That's, come on. but I mean, <sighs> Cap <look>. gate. <laughs> that, that suggests to me that, I don't know, his, com his comments don't inspire confidence. Mm. Um, look, Toto's not an engineer. His strength is is elsewhere. His his strength is running and trusting people. Mm. You know, um, I did a video about this. I looked at kind of you, Mike Elliott. His his now left. Allison's back in. Um, they've had a lot of you know staff leave, senior staff leave in in kind of recent times. Blondin gone to Aston Martin and Vows obviously to Williams and these big characters in that team. You know, I think that I don't know this weekend in Vegas. Honestly, I've got a fucking clue where they're going to be. Yeah, I mean, they're not particularly good in a straight line, typically. So I'm not yeah, holding out too much hope. <coughs> I'm not. I'm, yeah, I'm not massively hopeful. But because it's just them and Ferrari are just so inconsistent. It's just painful, isn't it? Just be anywhere at any given time. And it's just like it seems like. Look, over the course of the year, Mercedes have been consistently like a third quickest. Yeah. They've not often been the second quickest car. Yeah. But they've consistently enough been about third quickest yeah. to be second in the constructors it's, now. Whoever's second is, is it's a lottery. It's Ferrari or it's Ferrari. Aston or McLaren. Yeah, exactly. Then McLaren yeah. starts the season at the back. So it's like, I, I, I'm i not convinced they're going to be the ones to fight with Red Bull next year. Mm, yeah. Like how, how, where do you sit on Mercedes? competitiveness next season because I'm I'm not convinced no neither am I I don't know I, I, just, I just feel like their 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 direction has had to change so much since the start of the regs that I just don't see them understanding their car enough currently to be able to build on it to be title challengers next season I mean they clearly don't because they didn't understand what was going on in Brazil until after the weekend that's mm. not helpful you need to know as it's happening what's going on and where you, how you improve it, how you stop falling through like a stone. Because they had the sprint race mm. that literally was there as like a mini guide yeah. on how the actual race was going to go. And at no point during the weekend did they go, oh shit, man, we've actually worked this out. Like, let's, mm. let's do this. Or even if they started from the back, they'd probably ended up higher with Lewis than they would have done anyway if they just started from the back, but actually had their normal pace. <clears> That's <throat> the problem. They didn't like, know what to change. Yeah, exactly. You know, they've, they've evolved their, you know, their philosophy of the, the zero side pod, whatever, at the start of the regs. Mm. You can't, there's no way they're going to understand their car better than Red Bull do next season. No, no, no. It's, it's, not, it's just not possible. But you could, you, that's, the, that's the problem I have, right? Because they're still running like a Frankenstein car. 
Like you yeah. can see from the, the the way the side pods are and the jutty bits out yeah, where the, are just bolt the mirrors are here and there. Yeah, yeah, because they didn't that they need the side impact structure to be there, but also they've just had to kind of retrofit it because of the cost cap. And again, this is a uh, you know people. Uh, there's criticisms, valid criticisms around the cost cap, but I actually quite like the fact that you have to work with what you've got and you can't yeah. just spend your way out of a black hole because yeah, yeah. then that keeps, you know, that gives the, the smaller teams a chance to at least be, well, they're, the smaller teams are more competitive relative to, to the front than they've ever been, yeah, at least in qualifying. And base. teams, if they make a mistake, they pay for it rather than, well, paying for it rather than just spending their way out of the, out of the problem. That was good. Jeez. They pay for it in every sense. Yeah. Well, they could you They used to, no. Well, yeah, they could, they, they could used to pay for it, but now they pay for it. <clears throat> yeah. Either way, like it's like Red Bull. Oh, who is it? Is it Andy McCulloch? I think he works for Red Bull. I can't remember his name. He's one of the senior um, guys at Red Bull, and he was saying, you know, there was a quote and paraphrasing. It's like we'd be silly to chuck this concept out the bin. Of course, like we're gonna. But we need to add pace. We need to develop. Of course, they do. Right? They've barely upgraded their car. They've got the fewest upgrades of any. Uh, team this year yeah the fewest number of upgrades Mental. which is that's scary Alpha Terry have by far the most really yeah and only now yeah. are they yeah <laughs> Listen, that always that always <laughs> concerns me as well though mm. because if you're still bringing massive upgrades like two two races yeah. at the end of the season it's like well how much effort have you put into or how much thought have you put into next year in comparison to other teams that yeah. aren't upgrading? Right I just now? think for too long they were just trying to do it themselves rather than just take what you get from. Yeah, well, like, they just got they got a suspension. Bank the advantage, like just Red Bull, didn't they? Just the rear end. Yeah, they've got the rear. But to be fair, though, like for a, for a smaller team, it actually is worth upgrading until the end of the season because points are so much more valuable. Like Alpha Tower have just True. rocked up for the last two Grand Prix and just like slapped all the teams around them. If they get like decent points again in in Vegas even just like an eighth place, they're like actually going to finish like seventh in the championship, what? having been bottom all year. And the difference between seventh and bottom is about $35 million. Exactly. That that would pay off Ricardo twice. Yeah. That would pay for seven of those Emperor tickets at the Vegas Grand Prix. Oh my God, that was mass. That's actually so depressing. <laughs> seven, only seven. <laughs> you could see Adele seven <laughs> times or, or just make an entirely new, better Formula One car. No, you, you get a one in 47 chance of seeing mm. Adele six times. <laughs> it's actually the trap. So you're just not seeing Adele either way. I just, oh, look, I, I think that, again, I think part of the issue, right? McLaren, McLaren, and even even to less of an ex to less of an extent as to mine but mclaren for sure mm. they have their like stella's talked about you know there's 50 percent of the upgrades that they want to bring that they can't with this chassis yeah. but fundamentally they're on the they're on the they're on the path yeah. mercedes are, are still not on that path yeah because yeah, yeah. they're still using the frankenstein car yeah so they've got to now develop the car to the new path and then understand it as much as you know mclaren have been using this you know b-spec car essentially since austria mm. with lando and red bull have had it for since the start of 2022 yeah 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 literally i can't like i i also think you know mercedes are doing well this year right but we spent a lot of you know say we the the community right and there was so much talk at the start of this year who's the strongest driver pairing in f1 and the amount of people who said lewis and george and understandably and perhaps rightfully so, right? Yeah, yeah. I would argue as a team pairing, no, but individual talent, I think there's a strong argument. I still don't have a problem with that argument. To be yeah. Honest. And what, so are, are they not just covering up the misgivings by being so good? Like yeah. maybe they are actually driving, we'll never know. It's like the whole, you know, if you've got a backmarker car and you finish 14th, you could have had the greatest race of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And no one will know. Yeah. Maybe they, they are actually flattering this Mercedes and actually they're a lot further back because remember when Mercedes were dominating it wasn't because of their aero it was because their engine yeah it's 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 scary it's concerning really if you're, if you're a Mercedes fan I think for me the only way Mercedes or Ferrari as well I'm going to slap them in this category yeah chuck them in as well it, the only the way the points are true for them as well yeah the only way they're challenging Red Bull next season is, is if they accidentally discover something do you know what I'm saying like where they they're in the wind tunnel and they're going on a second run that backwards again just and then just like by accident, someone's just switched it on the wrong way and just gone like, hold on a second. Just just, just just put DAS on the car. Hey, yeah. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, Don't tell Joe Bauer. That would be... <laughs> I remember when that was a thing. That was sick. Did, did, That's did a great little innovation. Love they, that. Did they ban it? They let them have it till the end of the year. And, and then they... Fuming. 
That's uh, that's what F1 should be about. Innovation. If you, on, yeah, I'm I'm here for it. I'm bring it back. If you can find a way to bend the rules even slightly and get mm. performance out of him here for it. That would have been yeah. perfect at a race like Vegas as well, having yeah, something like yeah. Das. Because that was all about heating up the tyres and getting him to the yeah, right operating exactly. window. Yeah, yeah. They would have been cooking. Yeah, that um, was cold. That was cold. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I don't have much faith in, in Mercedes, honestly. Again, just because, yeah, they're, they're not on that path. They don't fully understand their car now. They're not going to understand their car better than, than say, a Red Bull next season. I, I just think there's way more compelling arguments for... McLaren. Uh, certainly McLaren. I, I'm here for McLaren. I'm really here. I know the bias is coming through, but I'm really here for that. McLaren going toe to toe with Red Bull next season would be delightful. <clears throat> and then slap just Ferrari and Mercedes turn up half the time as well, and we're, we're golden. Stella's cooking. Stella is cooking for Stella sure. Stella do be cooking. Um, well, outside of that, another thing I wanted to touch on um, a certain Braun documentary. Mm -hmm. And there's also there's a couple of things I want to talk about. There's Braun documentary, which is. Just come out, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, I haven't watched it yet. No, I don't know. Watch we, we'll, we'll do a review. We'll have, we'll, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to watch that and, and fully review. But there's also the Netflix um, golf competition that's mm -hmm. going on tonight because this podcast is coming out today. We're filming on the Tuesday today. Yeah, I think it's like 11 p.m. UK time. Nice. Um, start with the Braun Doc. Mm -hmm. um, I was about to say, oh, you know. Um, I was about to use Drive to Survive as a documentary, but I think that's a bit of a controversial way of uh, yeah. describing Drive to Survive. As entertainment. Um, what are your thoughts on the Braun story? Because I want to just start this off by saying, I don't think it's anywhere near as <sighs> magical as it's made out to be. Really? Do you not think? Because <clears throat> I, I, I think... The Toyota, sorry, sorry. Honda spent millions and millions and millions on uh, developing yes. that car. Yeah. Ross Braun saved the team from going under. Yeah. But it's not like, you know, when Haas rocked up in 2016 mm. and were in the points like first race. Yeah. And they were using old bits from Marussia who were a bat marker. Yeah. Um, to me, that was more impressive mm. than Braun 2009. Like it's, it's a... Obviously, Ross came in and saved loads of people's jobs. Incredible, right? And kept the team going and managed to get sponsors in over the course of the year to bankroll it, but they couldn't yeah. upgrade the car. But like, it, it's not... I, I want to see the... I've not seen the doc, right? But but it's not... I, I don't get that proper like... I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's not fully like... So you know what it is? It's a bit dramatised <clears throat> for me. It, it probably is a little bit. Story. I think the magic... I... I Sell me the magic. To be, to be honest, I didn't actually know that the, the, the Honda had put like quite that much money into like into developing the car. Oh yeah, they season. fully like yeah, yeah. sent it. Yeah, because yeah, I remember I remember people joking about it. Like if you just stage, you'd all, you'd all just won the chance. Oh yeah, yeah, like, literally. It's so stupid. Um, but obviously, like I think some of the I think some of the magic again comes from the fact that the, the jobs were saved. They just wouldn't have been on the grid. Which I get that. Been for like one guy saving them, whatever. One one young Ross Braun. And I think also it's the it's the that season was mental and it just flipped completely upside down. You got Ferrari and McLaren struggling at the back at the start of the season and throughout at times. And you've suddenly got Braun at the front. You've got the likes of Red Bull at the front, who had been like perennial mid-table teams up until that point, realistically. And I think it, it's the it's the story of the whole season. And also I think the drivers as well. You know, Jensen Button had never really had a chance mm. at winning a championship. He'd never been in a car that was worthy of winning multiple races, whatever. And suddenly he was able to actually like show off his ability mm. in a car that could win things. And also, you know, I know they, they had the money at the start. They had a very good car, obviously, at the start of the season, but they weren't able to develop whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And it felt like, obviously, everyone else was catching them up as the season went on. So it did still have that vibe of like, okay, right, cool. The, the, the base product we have here is good, mm. but everything else we're fucking hobnobbing together. You know, we've probably not got the staff that we should have. We're not able to build parts to make the car better. Mm. You know, we're being chased down from behind. We've got two drivers who are getting towards the end of their careers who have never really properly fought for a title because Rubens Barrichello was always just under Michael Schumacher's thumb. Mm. Um, and I think, I think that sort of coming together with, again, Ross Braun, saving the jobs of so many people, the fact that we'd have just completely lost a, um, 
a team that then even became Mercedes as well. Well, quite easily that car would never have realised its potential. Yeah, well, the team would have just gone under. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, it would just just never have made it onto the grid. So I think that's where, rather than like, oh yeah, the car. Obviously, the car was sick. Yeah. Obviously, the car had loads of money pumped into it because it, it blew everyone out of the water at the start. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's more the magic of the overall season. Yeah, the I get team that. Was saved and I get Jensen that. Button. But I, I think, I think, I guess, yeah. I think my issue is is. But you're right. Yeah, I, it's, I, it's not I, like a rags to riches story. No. Of like they had six pound fifty in the bank account and made like the greatest car of all time. Like I, I see, I see almost like an attempt. I feel like I'm seeing an attempt to label this as like this brand new team. Yeah. But it's not a brand new team. No, it wasn't. The team was well established. It had been around it for years. name and identity. Yeah, which happens like quite often. Mm. That would be like, you know, when Lawrence Stroll bought Ray, um, Force India, that was going to go under and yeah. he bought that and, you know, for discounted rate and whatever. Yeah. And yeah, I, I look, don't get me wrong. Like the, I still remember that season well. Like that was, you know, I was, I would have been th- 16. Yeah. To be fair, yeah. what it's worth as well, the Honda of the year before was fucking awful. Oh God, yeah. So it's still like... I fully a, tanked that season into the, into the mountain. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. It, it is still like a, oh, like a surprise in terms of like they managed to, you know, develop what was a shocking car at the end of a reg change into a new reg change being like so dominant. It's like, I mean, what, what's the equivalent now? Yeah. What would be, well, the equivalent obviously you've got the cost cap now, so it's not like you're going to just pump loads of money into it, but I guess it is the equivalent of like Williams or like Alfa Romeo just turning up next season and being like fucking insane. Yeah, yeah, I guess. In I, terms of like performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exists. No, you're right. Like in, in, in terms of a jump, I mean, that kind of jump can only really happen in a new set of regulations, yeah, can't it? Yeah, of course, yeah. Because obviously like the Honda engineers had you know, caught onto something mm-hmm. and were like, okay, like, and then obviously I turned up at like pre-season testing mm-hmm. and well, obviously this is after Ross Braun had, had then saved the team and they were like a second and a half faster. So obviously they had their, you know, the, a double diffuser, which then everyone eventually kind of copied. Yeah. So you need that. Yeah, it would, it would, it requires that kind of innovation. It would have been like if, yeah, it would have been as if maybe a, I don't know, an Alpine like started 2022 as like by far the fastest car. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess yeah. that would be like an equivalent. Yeah. But then also it was yeah, called Gasly. Ryan Reynolds F1 team. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Facts. Dead because it'd been bought from from Renault. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That like would that. be the most Renault thing ever, by the way. If they did actually, that, that they are like Honda now. <laughs> they are one million percent. Whenever they sell that team, it's going to win the championship the next. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. <laughs> and no one will ever buy an Alpine car for the road ever. I the like three. the A110, but they make one car. Make walk. They keep teasing. Oh, we're going to make new cars soon. It's like when is soon? Mm. Like just give give them to us now. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, Alpine Palace stuff, by the way? No, I haven't. I like Palace as a, as a brand. I like Palace. I'm not convinced by the collection. All right, well, I'll be I'll, honest. I'll, I'll have a gander. Yeah, there's a nice, like, blue t shirt that's quite simple. Mm. Um, and they've got the capper in, like, pink and all that. But yeah, and those kind of, I'm not surprised Alpine are doing that kind of stuff because yeah. they've got all this celebrity endorsement. So they're going to, you know, going to push the, push the hype stuff. But makes sense. Yeah, the, the, no, I'm, I'm interested in seeing the Brawn Dock for sure. But I'm, yeah. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see how they paint the picture because I, I know from like the the uh, teasers I've seen, it's like, you know, you've got other team principal like Christian Horner's on there being like, oh, we didn't, we thought they were kind of maybe the word cheat gets thrown around a lot. Everyone's, it gets up, that actually pisses me off about F1. Like people always just like cheat, cheat, cheat. Like, oh, so bitter. The, the point is to, you got to go close to the sun. Everyone's yeah. going, everyone's got to try and take, and if you slightly overstep, you don't just go cheat, you know, well, yeah. y- like, it's not like in other like athletic sports where it's like, oh yeah, you're doing PE, you're, like, so, yeah, you're yeah, actually yeah. cheating. Yeah, exactly. It's not the same in Formula One. If you just come up with something innovative, you're not cheating, bruv. You're pushing the limits. Just, yeah, you're just pushing the limits or you just did something clever. Yeah, no, for sure. But um, <clears throat> Ridiculous. Also, the, you say the golfing thing, Netflix Cup. Mm. Um, so obviously you've got Drive to Survive and Full Swing. Yeah, two very similar um, again documentaries. Um, one Formula One, one golf. So they've got a few together. Yeah. Your boy Lando is going to be playing Ricky Fowler. Indeed, indeed. So um, a good golfist. Yeah, so he's Lando. He is Alex Albon as well. He's playing also with a good golfist Homer. I can't remember his first name. Simpson. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I hope Alex is not Homer Simpson. Yeah. Um, you've got Pierre's involved as well mm-hmm. and uh, Carlos. 
I can't imagine Pierre Gasly playing golf for some reason. Yeah. Sure he does, obviously. Sergio but... plays golf as well. Really? I bet he was gutted to not be included. Yeah. He's like, no, no, only, got, only got four. Yeah, he needs to stop bidding it then. Predictions, what are predict him? As a, as a, as a golf... As a fountain gold, of golf knowledge, Niran. I honestly, I don't think there's a sport that I know less about <laughs> than golf. Genuinely, <laughs> I've just got back. At, actually, after Vegas, after live stream, I'm going to be playing some golf. Is it? Yeah. So I'm going to be getting up at half three and be playing golf at half ten. Flipping. Hopefully, the race isn't red flag loads. Otherwise, I'll miss it. But. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully not. Um, well, I think so. You got Lando versus Carlos in the first semi final. Oh, Carlando. Yeah. Really Got to make like, sure them two play each other. Yeah, yeah, kind of has to just for the content, really. Um, I think Carlos, Carlos has been playing it longer than that. Carl, yeah, Carlos was also in a competition. I'm pretty sure he did the Ryder Cup. Yeah, he did the Ryder Powers Cup. That, guessing, yeah, well. yeah. Gareth Bale was doing it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But yeah, so Carlos was in that. I, I back my boy. You got to back your boy. There's absolutely no golf knowledge being provided there. It's just, it's just my boy. So I'm going. I'm going. Carlos Sainz. He's been. Uh, he's been posting some thirst traps of him playing topless. <laughs> as well of so course. he's ready standard science he's ready behavior. exactly uh, and then Albon Gasly I think them two are a little bit less experienced than Orlando and Carlos yeah. but I mean Alex's missus is a professional golfer well it's got to be Alex then he's, a, he's had he's had professional training plus he's your boy yeah they're putting yeah, the old Tour Rosso big. boys against each other plus I don't know if I've ever seen a French person play golf before wee oui, wee oui. Um, I'm trying to think of one French golfer Bag to be fair <laughs> My, Sorry. my golf knowledge is not that good that I know French golfers um, yeah we'll see it'll be interesting to see how that goes though. Ne I've never watched anything live on Netflix yeah I've uh, never I didn't even know that was a thing yeah actually, but yeah obviously makes I think sense. they're starting to, starting, to, starting to get into that yeah good kind stuff. of stuff um, finally got another little topic we wanted to cover, cover off here um, we're coming to the end of the season mm -hmm. we've had a lot of drivers in seats we've had 22 drivers in 26 this yeah, year. Yeah, we have, yeah. yeah. Um, Nero, I want to assemble a little a little dream F1 grid. Avengers Assemble. L l l little assembly. So yeah. you can pick drivers from any generation. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I can just pick my favourites and just we'll just slap them all in, in a grid together. And I want you to pick what car that they go in. They go in. Okay. Ooh, okay. So, oh, man. so let's... Sh I, I think let's start with, with teams. Teams. So who would you like to see... In the let's let's not sugarcoat it. Hass are the worst team right now. Mm. I think. Um, ha, who who would you want to see in the Hass in a near an all timer dream? Do they grid? have to have driven for Hass? No 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 no. Okay. Oh sick! Oh, no, I could, could be. Anyone. I can freestyle it. Sick yeah. yeah. In there. Any any driver you can put whoever you like oh, in, in the Hass. Who do okay. you want to see struggling at the back? But maybe he's a really good driver and they can. Maybe you put the better drivers in the worst cars and. Yeah, to keep things. Nah, just just for the sake of, of continuity, I'm okay. going to try and you know we'll match drivers to teams. Okay, it's like how teams are doing right now. Um, I'm going to save some spots for Williams, so instead we're going to use Nicholas Latifi uh, and slap him in a hat. <laughs> we're going to have a little Pan Am Can Canadian American combination. Purely, um, and I say purely. Well, purely. a a. Because Latifi has to be on this grid for okay. entertainment purposes okay. again. Fine. Fine. Definitely, well, no, allegedly a paid actor. <laughs> and I'm alleging that um, <laughs> of, of Formula One. So he has to be on the grid again okay. to cool. provide entertainment incidents and drama. Yep. And I also need to see Gunter Steiner and him react. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Together, nice, nice, nice. Based on the amount of I like that. Uh Now, who else is a crash happy Formula One driver? Again, I'm just thinking about interactions here. Pastor. Pastor. Oh, wow. Yeah, safe. Cool. That is, that's the dream. That's the dream. Latifi and Maldonado. <laughs> Are you mad? That's chaos. That is chaos. They're not making it's it just, past turn one 50% of good. the time. It's too good. That's that would be... un. Because the thing about okay. Pastor Maldonado is he was low-key actually good. Like, there, were, there was a good driver in there until he lost all of his confidence completely. Yeah. He yeah. went to Lotus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was the occasional, like, when Williams... Because he was like... When Williams brought that all right car in 2020, mm. just randomly, he won obviously in Spain. Mm. And there was like multiple opportunities or multiple times where he was battling with like Lewis. Well, when they scrapped him Valencia. Yeah, they scrapped him. He obviously collided, shock. Um, but he was scrapping with Lewis Hamilton in exactly, the McLaren. Exactly, yeah. So. There's, there's raw pace yeah. in there. So I think that would actually be quite an interesting dynamic. So I think Latifi and Maldonado at Haas. All right, Haas, we'll do that. We'll, we'll do a little joint. Right, 
Alfa Romeo. Who's going in the Alfa Romeo? I'll, I'll, I'll pick first on this one. You can pick the second okay. driver on each team. So Sauber um, is going to be going back to Sauber next year. So mm. I kind of I want to focus more on that team, that energy. Mm. I would like to see. I'd like to bring a driver back that's been at Sauber before, mm. and a driver who started their career. Hmm. You start, see, Fernando started his career at Minardi, didn't he? Mm. Sauber have had many a good driver over the years. Uh, maybe I'll just maybe I'll just go f- go for it and just pluck some some crazy name. No, you know what? In a Sauber, I'm going to put Nicky Lauda. Nicky Lauda in a Sauber. Nicky Lauda in a, a Sauber. Well, by the way, that is a bar. He's Austrian. Okay, yeah, nice, yeah. They're Swiss. Oh, it's the same thing. Close. Yeah. <laughs> same colours in their same flag. Same colours, yeah. Similar places in the world. Iconic driver. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. it, one of underrated, yeah. for sure, yeah, as well, for sure. Um, you look at what he went through to, to, to come back after his crash at uh, the Nürburgring. That takes some, in terms of mentality monster. Yeah, um, thanks. Nicky Lauda, for sure. Pr- Prime Lauda. I'm putting in one of those Salvas. And, and they will be better next year. I read an article this morning that they're going to bring a new car in 2024. I was like, thank fuck for that. Yeah. Because they can't Christ, lose they this need, shit heap again. They need, they need to, man. <laughs> it's, it's fucking awful right now. Oh, so who goes in the second? These are three drivers I'd never have thought if we were going to put as the first three of 20. <laughs> should, we, should we keep the storylines going? Go on, do it. Should, should we keep the storylines going? Do it. Now, I was quoted on this show as saying that Formula One media or motorsport media is pretty bad. Apart from one thing, and that was Rush. James Hunt. Hunt louder in Sauber. Slap him in the other car, Hunt mate. Hunt louder in a Sauber. I love that. That is, that's gold right there. But we need them to become better. We need yeah. the team to, we need the team to, that, that's, that's, pull a, their that's a slow burner. Because yeah. the, the team's going to have to become good. And they so will need to work really, together as well. Exactly. To, to, to improve the car. Okay. Okay, I like that. Alpha Tauri. Alpha Tauri. Realistic. Minardi. Oh, yeah. It's we, kind of Minardi, remember? Yeah, we could do, we could either do, it's the Minardi vibe, or we could do like, we'll just get some Red Bull Juniors back that we liked. All Red Bull drivers. I'm El Gaswari. <laughs> yes. Get him in. Get him in. All day. I'm El uh, Red That's Bull one. drivers, maybe that we won't pick elsewhere, can go, can go here. Okay. Maybe. So, that kind of actually limits the amount. There's only really like Vettel, Verstappen. Hmm. You could maybe slap David Coulthard in one of them or something. I think August Rari would have been. He's like the same age as like Perez and. Do you want to just? Do you want to slap Jaime? I know you want to. I do. Like, okay, fine. He's in. Just, He's in. All right, August Rari can. can <laughs> <laughs> this is such a stupid list so far. <laughs> Checo and the other one. Check Mark Wibber. Mark Wibber. Mark Wibber. Mark so Wibber. Just say his name stupidly. Sebastian Bourdais. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. We're not doing that. <laughs> Daniel Ricciardo. He's, he's, I mean, he's literally he's there, there now. Where are you yeah, to... fuck it, leave him in there. Yeah, yeah. Should we just leave him in? Don't need Ricardo, to do a, doesn't doesn't need to do a seat fit. All right, cool. That's <laughs> <laughs> fine. I'll, I'm happy with that. Safe Williams, fine. Williams. Go on, you go Ooh, first. Williams. This is this is actually quite hard off the top of my head. You know what? Actually, uh, there's, there is one. There's a story of unfulfilled potential. A man that actually drove for Williams at one point. Mm-hmm. A man that really, really, honestly, should have had a sensational career had it not been for injury. And I would love to restore him back to that point before mm-hmm. the injury and see what he could do, even though it's not in a mm. great car here. But hopefully Williams improve and hopefully we would see Robert Kubica. Robert Kubica. Do, 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 do. <laughs> what a man. What, what a geezer. Yes, that's yeah, a great I'm, shout. I'm slapping him in there. Alongside the moustache. Mm-hmm. It's November this month mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Nigel Mansell, bring him back. Yeah, yeah. Bring him back. <laughs> Nigel Mansell. <laughs> 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 These teams are mental. <laughs> He's absolutely mad. Right, Alpine. Alpine. We're going to get to the end, by the way, and realize we've just missed out Al- loads of <laughs> sick names we put Al Gashwari and Maldonado in. <laughs> But yeah, carry on. Alpine. <clears throat> I would. I hope uh, along at home you're doing it as well, right? Yeah. This is this is your your own grid. There's no right or wrong answer. Yeah. yeah. Who's in the Alpine? The Renault it used to be Lotus. It's been through many different. I was going to say we could keep the French connection, but like, there's not actually a crazy amount of. Like, Alan Prost actually probably makes a decent amount of sense. Or, the, or do you want to keep him for a better team? No, I'm I'm happy with putting Prost in. in the yeah, Alpine. yeah. He can he can lead Alpine to glory. Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. 
So we can slap him in there. Who, who else is going in? Hmm. Okay, so I'm trying to think of a driver that matches Alpine's energy. Mm. The Renault kind of what could have been, but not. Mm. And I'm thinking maybe Juan Pablo Montoya. Oh, yes. Yes. Boom. Montoya was all action. Mm. This grid is carnage, by the mm. way. There's a <laughs> lap one catastrophe every single lap. Every single race, sorry. Every time. I want someone to like recreate this in the F1 game using like a modded version. Yeah, to just, yeah, yeah. Action and then play through the galore. championship and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd that be would be vibe. chaos. All right, cool. That's a good one. Who's okay. next? Aston Martin. Aston Martin. Yeah. So again, these used to be um, Racing Point, Force India, Spiker, Midland, <coughs> uh, everything. Right? Jordan. Yeah, the whole yeah, gang. Back to the gang. Jordan days. What are we thinking? I think we need to start drawing for, for some more classics again. Mm -hmm. We're running out of teams. Yeah. Don't want to. Don't want to miss out on some 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 big big names. Mm. Who could go here realistically? Um, I'm just thinking of champions as well. To be honest with you, I think I would like to suggest mm. Jim Clark. Oh, old school British he, Lotus like was Aston green. Martin. Yeah, he always drove for Lotus. <clears throat> green car, British marquee. Yeah. Jim Clark. <clears throat> That's good. That's good from you. Slap it. Slap it down. Slapped. Have you got anyone else to put in there? Another Brit, maybe? or Yeah, I don't know who fits the Aston Martin kind of aesthetic, the style. Johnny. Maybe, yeah. maybe a Jackie Stewart? Yeah, I was thinking Jackie Stewart, to be fair. Clark and Stewart Clark in the Aston? Stewart. That's a British classic, that is, mate. Let's do that. Make That's it happen. That would do. Boom. All right, cool. Next up. Ferrari. Ferrari. There's, there's one man that has to go in here. Go on. Michael Schumacher. Has to be. It, there's, there's no way not to. There's, to there's no way that we couldn't slap Michael in, in a Ferrari. Hmm. Who else? So who's his teammate? Do we, go, do we go chaotic and put Lewis Hamilton in? Oh, <laughs> Imagine <laughs> you, you can reply to the comments, mate. <laughs> you can reply to the comments. Uh, to be fair, there's a lot of options for McLaren, so you might want to do something stupid. Mm, like no, no, true, true, true. Okay, so Ferrari, definitely Schumacher. Yeah. Maybe like a Fangio. Or do you want to put Fernando Alonso in there? Oh, Michael Schumacher and Fernando Alonso would be absolutely mad. Nah, that's it. That's yeah, it. it's right, got to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alonso Schumacher. Alonso Ferrari. Schumacher is nuts. Yeah, that's that's exceptional. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That, oh my God, I that would have been so cool. Reigniting that 05, 06 battle. In a like, Ferrari. In a Ferrari. Oh. Even better. Oof. Even yeah, more care. That's, that's crazy. Right, right, we've we've cooked with that one. I'm not going right. to lie. We've really cooked. Well, Mercedes, I want to put Fangio in there. Okay. That's Because he, he, he needs he needs to be uh, needs to be pre uh, represented. He does. He does. As uh, <sighs> Do you want to leave Lewis in there? Because again, there are options. Or do you want to actually... Oh, Ah, actually, no, no I've got a different I, I idea. Have, I have a concept for McLaren. I have, I have, I've, got a, I've got a concept for McLaren. I have McLaren a concept well. for McLaren, right? We might have the same concept. <laughs> okay. We might be chefing the same thing there. Okay, okay. For Mercedes, maybe uh, Look, maybe uh, Mick Hakkinen. I was literally going to say that. Oh, we're cooking. Right. We're cooking. It's got to right. be. Fangio right. Hakkinen. Fangio and Hakkinen. There's titles for days on this grid, by yep. the way. There's about 58 world titles on this grid as, we, as we're speaking. Uh, <laughs> so we go to McLaren next. And then Little Latifi and Maldonado. <laughs> They're for entertainment at the back. Okay, okay. McLaren, McLaren, right. Sell me the dream. If it's the same dream. I, I, let, let me write down what I think you think it is. Okay. Okay. Because to me, we're, we're building storylines here, ladies and gentlemen. So, all right. That's what this is all about. We're building stories. We got Hunt v Louder so at the back can we, of the grid. Right, camera, camera, camera on me, please. Okay, um, I won't look. Producer Lewis, let's get this. I'm not looking. No, I don't think you can see what no, I've written. Audio on only. He's showing his phone to the camera. Okay, he's written it down. <clears throat> what is your dream McLaren lineup now? The McLaren dream lineup. All right, we've 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 mentioned it. We've uttered his name already so far. Um, a man who was a boy, but a boy when McLaren. Picked him up um, <laughs> back, in, back in the day in the 90s. Sir Lewis Hamilton, a seven-time world champion. A man that joined them so young and has gone on to do unbelievable things in the sport. But he had an inspiration as a young child. 
There was only there was only one driver that he wanted to be like, and there's only one place other than Britain where he's heralded as one of their own, and that's in Brazil. And the driver that he used to adore when he was young, <laughs> Ayrton Senna. That's the dream. Ayrton Senna, Lewis Hamilton, McLaren combination. Marlboro white and red livery. Boom. The dream yeah, is real. Yeah, the dream. Come the, on. The dream is real. That is the dream. Oh, Senna Hamilton. Man, yo, this is McLaren. sick. We have, we've, we've regenerated Formula One here. This is nuts. This has been too fun. Which, of course, leaves us with Red Bull. Leaves us with Red Bull Racing. So, obviously, Vettel, um, Verstappen, uh, Red Bull's two most iconic drivers. And decorated. Trying drivers. to think if there's anyone else. Mark Webber. That we've not <laughs> mentioned. Mark Webber. <laughs> that we've not mentioned that potentially deserves a seat at that table. Don't forget as well, Red Bull used to be Jaguar. You know, so Christian Cleans in there. <laughs> fucking... Johnny Herbert's in there as well. <laughs> yes. There's, there's up the Johnny. There's up. Oh, that's crazy. Up the <laughs> Can't say up the Johnny, mate. That's <laughs> mental. Um, I, I think Verstappen Vettel. It has to be VV, doesn't it? Yeah, I think, I think I, that as well just like closes off the book. I think of like, mm. I mean, we're definitely forget. We're doing this off the domes. We've definitely forgotten like a double champion somewhere and replaced him with Jaime Algashwari. Or some shit. Yeah, but I, I think, think in terms of closing of them, off, yeah. certainly recent, you know, like powerhouses of the sport. Well, Hamilton, Verstappen, Vettel, Senna, Prost, Alonso, Alonso yeah. Fangio, Schumacher. Clark, Stewart. I think we've got I all think, the... I think we've got all the greats there. The big Even hitters. Hakkinen's in there as well. I think, I think we've, done, we've done a job. Bosh. George yeah. Russell as backup Mercedes driver. No, wherever Hamilton was. No, yeah, backup <laughs> McLaren driver. Just scrap in reserve. Yeah, reserve. He's reserve. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, yeah. only doing testing. Sorry, George. Um, oh, sweet. That was fun. That is sensational. Let us know what you would have changed as well down in the comment section. Absolutely. Uh, any teams that you believe we've done wrong, let us know and build your own down there too. We want to hear them. Vegas Grand Prix weekend, baby. Oh, it's man. coming. Quick prediction. Race winner. Lando Norris. Same. Fuck it. Fuck British bias. Rule Brit. No. <laughs> Quadrant bias. Quadrant bias. I've got to be. Got to be. Full yeah. send it. I got think this be. is a great opportunity for him. I, I think really this do. is it. I think this is it. McLaren will, yeah, like you said, McLaren will turn their, their, their tyres on and they're going to have good pace round here. Birthday recently. First win in Vegas. It's happening. Um, I'm set. If that happens, I'm flying to Vegas, by the way. Mid show. I'll be out of there. I'll I'll British Airways <laughs> for lights <laughs> immediate. Eleven hours later, yeah, everyone's I'll miss, already I'll got miss, home. Yeah, I'll miss all the rain. <laughs> you'll, miss, you'll miss the part. Everyone's everyone's packed up and got home. <laughs> Everyone, everyone's flying the other way. <laughs> everyone, hold on a second, lads. I'm on the way. I'm Fucking coming. hell, save a Jaeger bomb. Uh, don't forget to drop a like on the podcast if you're watching on YouTube. Five mm. star on Apple Podcast, Spotify, wherever else Please, you yeah. listen to your podos. And we will see you for the last lap live on Sunday, mm -hmm. 6 a.m., 5.30 a.m., sorry, yeah, UK up. time for 6 a.m. lights out. Yeah. And uh, then 6 p.m. on next Tuesday for the post-race pod. Indeed so. We'll see you then, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good one. Enjoy Vegas.